Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Pendelides, live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks for being with us. It's time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Rick Ducat will take us through the charts here to take us through the trades. Alan Nuckman, Chief Market Strategist, BullseyeOption.com. Thank you both for being with us. Alan, before uh, we get to the trades and some of these stocks, just a big picture thought we heard from the Fed yesterday. We finished January. Your thoughts? continuing that overall upward trend. It had eight out of the last 10 sessions coming into yesterday. We're making new record highs. So we needed some profit to pull back. And that's exactly what we got. What I'm looking for is, you know, not the tough love necessarily, but obviously he's done a very good job, Powell has, of, of manipulating the market to get the, uh, to get the action that he wants. Um, Manipulation is a strong word. Massaging the market, let's just say. Um, and he's talking tough, but what I did notice that was a real bright spot was the fact that the 10 year no yield, which is driven by supply and demand, that dropped below the 390 level and it's accelerated again today. So that's very much a positive. We take out this 375 low, then the, the 10 year note yield should get down to that 325 breakup, and that's very, very positive. Okay, so with that, so let's begin your ideas and trades today. First up is Corning. Why is this one on your radar? Well, it's part of a tech stock that hasn't taken off. Now, Corning is trading around 32. It came to my head because, it, you know, with the Apple new vision glasses or whatever these things are called, I'm, I don't even think they're using Corning, but it made me think of how the Gorilla Glass was a thing for uh, Apple way back when and, and for Corning. And so I looked up the chart. Now, I've been watching this chart here recently. It has been trading completely sideways for six weeks. It broke out. I didn't want to put on a position ahead of earnings. So now we're getting a second chance because it's come back in now to fill the gap. It had traded between you know 30 and 32 for six weeks. And uh, now we're pulling, pulling back. 30 is a very important number in this stock. It's the midpoint of the range for the year between 25 and 35. Uh, this stock is down 10% from last February. And it's down 30 percent from 2021, whereas the Nasdaq is up uh, significantly, obviously. So the way. Right. So watch. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I, Go ahead. I thought you were trying. Play here's with the $30 call uh, for June. That's trading for about three. It's two dollars in the money. Plenty of time for development, and uh, look to lean on this 30 level. Yeah, okay. So uh, when we think about where it was and the range it's been in, it's a 31.88 today. Rick Ducat, take a look at the charts for us, please. Yeah, I definitely see what Alan's talking about with the sideways price action of late here. But backing up a little bit here, we can see that there was a, a long period of downward sloping price action here, culminating with these yearly lows when we had an earnings event here. Now, <clears throat> earnings turned things around. We're up 26% from that point here, but definitely had some sideways action uh, for quite a, uh, a notable amount of time there here. Now we can see that price has gotten another boost upward here. And this is the type of price action that I'm always very interested in here because it could be a bull flag type uh, pattern forming here. We had a fundamental change in earnings. We had a significant gap up. Then we have a period of downward price action here. And, uh, you know, you look for this, this profit taking slash consolidation slash whatever you want to call it, downward action here. And that is the, the, the flag or pennant type pattern here. And, uh, you know, that's, that's bullish here. You look for a retest of some kind of support. And then uh, the, the play would be that you could either go long or, or you know, do some other type of trade of your own devising there. But we can see here that we were in a channel to the upside for much of the time since last earnings. We broke out to the upside. Now we're retesting these boundaries here. So this area really stands out to me in terms of support. The area centered around 31 or so. That was a gap where we had uh, uh, the earnings uh, uh, pre-gap uh, highs. We've got our 252-day EMA. We've also got our 21-day EMA all kind of close together here. So that seems like a key area to watch for potential support. Um, we're above our moving averages. The moving averages are trending upward. Things are more biased to the upside. So if we're looking for potential resistance, volume profile point of control, our area of heaviest trading on our chart comes in near 3375. Then back here, we've got an old gap. The post gap highs come in uh, right around 35, just below 35. So those would be some areas to take note of here. 
Okay, thank you for all of that. Um, you know, and look, some indicators of bullishness, you know, we're in these channels. Final thoughts, Alan, on this name. I'm just looking to buy a pullback. Uh, crazy he was looking for and using that to see how the market reacts from here. But again, it's got five months of time. It's $2 in the money. The expiration break even is a dollar higher. And if we get up to that upward gap that we looked at, uh, then this option almost doubles in value. Okay. Next up, you have Marathon Oil. This is uh, oil has been hovering around some recent highs. Your thoughts on MRO today, Alan? Well, I'm always looking at the energy sector because I love the risk reward, especially with so many stocks that are overextended, but they can always get further overextended, obviously. So this stock is down about 20% in the last six months. It's got a PE of eight, so it's got some value there. Um, what I'm looking at here is that it's been between 22 and 28 for the year. And we'll see if it, you know, it's got a higher low on this last little swing down. A breakout of that range target is 34. So there's there's upside without a whole lot of downside, in my opinion, in the energy energy complex as it plays catch up, as the rates come down, uh, as we cut rates, and as a dollar uh, will decline. So there's a lot of positives there. So I'm looking at a June option again, again, the June 20 call, uh, which is below the low. It's trading about four. Uh, 375 or so, it's $3 in the money, $3 in the money, sorry. Uh, it's got a 70 delta and about five months of time. So it's a chip uh, because I like the action in crude oil. Crude oil's acted pretty, pretty well lately. And uh, technically, we could get a quick run if we break above that 80, that'd be a multi month high. And then you could get some scramble on the upside. I always price pop potential when it comes to commodities. All right. Thank you for that. What do you think about these charts today, Rick, when you take a look at the numbers? Well, this, uh, the shares of this company have taken a bit of a hit since we reached our yearly 52-week highs here near 29.56, trending downward from that point. We have our blue dashed line here, our trend line here. That was resistance several times. And then it later became supportive once again. And this area near 2185 was really interesting to me, This, this where the green line and the blue line intersect, because that was our previous lows from all the way back here. So now we've got uh, basically a triple bottom type price action here to provide us with some support going forward here. So now we're finding ourselves up almost 11% off the intraday uh, yearly lows here. We uh, are struggling to take out our 21 day EMA. We made our way above it earlier this week, but we faltered a little bit. We've slipped below it once again. We're below all three of our moving averages. They're all trending downward here. So uh, definitely had a, a little bit of a, a, a rough time in this name here, but there's some right points. One is that even though price made lower lows here, RSI showed bullish divergence. Momentum actually was improving. Momentum was trending up during this time. We couldn't quite hang on to that 50 midline that separates bearish from bullish momentum, but we've improved notably from that point. So the area Alan mentioned, right around 23.75, the break even on that trade, that stood out to me as well because it represents our post gap uh, closing prices that we saw there. That lines up almost exactly with that break even point. So we've got kind of a resistance zone right here. We've got our gap and our 63 day EMA uh, both coming in in like a 40 cent range between 23.75 to 24.15. If we can cross above that point, uh, that could be a pretty interesting bullish scenario. Support 21.85 though, that triple bottom that I mentioned before. Yeah, understood. Great charts there, Rick Ducat. Thank you for those. Final thoughts, Alan, on Marathon Oil today. Well, to sum up everything you just said, triple bottom. All right. Next up, Sunrun. Uh, we're looking at Sunrun here. It's obviously come off some recent highs that it had at the end of last year. Um, your thoughts? Yeah, it used to be somebody, uh, but it has made a nice bottom base. It's 80% off its high, but it's also 80% off its low. In the big picture, we've been trading mostly between 10 and 20. Uh, and so 15 is an important midpoint. We popped above that. So that's typically a technical sign. It'll pop to the range top of 20. And then we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, but, uh, you know, it did come back to that breakout of 10 before that takeoff. So that's a very significant, significant point in the big, big picture. So I've seen a lot of leverage accumulation in this stock. So the smart money is loading up on positions and they're using options to do that. So that's a very 
bullish, bullish side. Uh, this was a hundred dollar stock, you know, in 2021. So from a value standpoint, from risk reward standpoint, I like where we stand here. Uh, I'm looking at a June $10 call again. 10 is at that important point. That was that breakout uh, way back when uh, that $10 call deep in the money. It's deeper than I usually go because the volatility is high. And I want to lower the uh, expiration break even. So that's trading for about 650. So the expiration break even is only a dollar higher. Uh, but if you're buying a more expensive option like that, sometimes what you want to do is put in a stop loss at half of what you pay uh, because either the stock's gone the other way or you're running out of time. Now, June option has five months. So uh, that's probably not part of the equation. So let's see if we can get some extension above this 15 and head to 20. If that happens, this option gains 50%. Okay. Um, look, you know, we see some real potential here, Rick. Your thoughts on the technicals, please. Well, uh, long-term downtrend still in play here. You can see that we had this downward sloping trend line connecting these highs, uh, you know, just steadily trending downward here. But consider this, from our yearly lows of 843 to where we are now, the current uh, uh, percent move here from this point to this point, we're up about 70%. So substantial gains. Uh, there's some definite possibilities in this name here. You can see that we had some tension as well. We had our, our longer term downward sloping trend line, our shorter term upward sloping trend line in white, uh, both of these lines here. It did not hold though. We, we uh, fell to the downside. We're below all three of our moving averages. They're all trending downward right now. RSI also showed a little bit of bearish divergence as we made our recent peak there. Now we're below Below that 50 midline, uh, which is once again suggestive uh, more toward the downside here. However, we've got this volume node here right around 14. That could be a supportive area to watch. Um, and the area that Alan mentioned, I believe it was 1650 was the break even. I had a very close area that I noted on my chart here because that was the post gap uh, lows that we saw some consolidation there, and also the highs that we hit recently. That could be a key area to break above here. Uh, you know, you look for these repeated areas where, where price stops over and over again. The, the more times it stops there, the greater weight that area has. So we could see some energy if we break out above that point. Upside target, right around here representing the, uh, the the peak that we had during our last rally upward uh, near about 2032 or so that would be a mark to beat that was our best close here to the downside 1220 highs highs once again lows and lows so another of these areas where price stopped over and over again to consider okay thank you for all of those appreciate it good luck there um, final thoughts Alan Nuckman bullseyeoption.com give it to us we got 75 points away from S&P 5000 on Tuesday. So let's see how the markets react when we push up. But it's a healthy sign when you get this profit taking. We were getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I'm still very bullish for the long term. Uh, rates are coming down. It's just a matter of, of when. And if you look at it, you know, there's nearly 100 percent chance that it's going to happen in May. And there's actually, you know, a, a 30 percent chance or something that there's a half point cut in May. So just go with what the markets are telling you. And uh, so far, they've uh, they put us on the perfect path throwing the half point at us. Now we're having all new conversations. Thank you so much. Wonderful to see you both. Really appreciate it. A great big three today. Alan Nuckman of bullseyeoption.com and Rick Ducat there on the charts for us today. Thank you both.